Welcome back you two subscribers and viewers. Today we are standing along the transportation canal in the area of the plantation where the sawmills once stood. We are standing a quarter mile north of the Collins family front doorstep. Lumber was a major cash crop of Somerset Place. This land originally was a densely forested swamp. In order to grow crops, land needed to be cleared first. Over the 80 years of this plantation, more than 6,000 acres was cleared for growing crops. Thus, trees were cut down and the logs were sent to the sawmills. Logging was typically done during the winter months here, but from time to time in the ledger entries, we see logging done in March and May as well. In a January 1790 ledger entry, the lake company paid John Allen for 200 days of work at the lake building the mills. By 1791, there were two sawmills standing along the transportation canal. The late company business partners, Josiah Collins I, Nathaniel Allen, and Dr. Samuel Dickinson placed an advertisement in the Edenton Gazette in early 1791. They were advertising the completion of their sawmills on the canal by the Scuppernong River. And with the completion of the sawmills, they now have for sale, quote, a quantity of excellent cypress plank and scantling, which they will dispose of on reasonable terms and where orders for house frames and all kinds of sawmill timber will be executed at the shortest notice. The lumber will be delivered at the mouth of the canal where any vessel with an easy drought of water may take in her full cargo. We don't know much more about the sawmills until we reach the early 1800s. In the 1819 inventory of Somerset Place, we see stored in one of the sawmills one mill saw, three crow bars, one ring hook, four false dogs, one machine for breaking flax, and one machine for sawing. Dogs are used to hold the log in place as it is being cut by the saw. To learn more about a water-powered sawmill and dogs, click on the link we've provided in the description of this video. Between this inventory list and the second one, which was taken in 1839, we see the sawmills mentioned in a couple letters and other documents. One of those letters, Charles Pettigrew wrote to his father Ebenezer in 1837. In it, he says, Mr. Collins is fixed on Mr. Duncan's plan and succeeds admirably. So that in 24 hours, they say the two sawmills will saw 6,000 feet of plank board measured or very near it. When the 1839 inventory list was compiled, several more items were listed in the sawmills. This list included one small chain, three saw stirrups, four old mill saws, two sawmill lanterns, nine floats, with other items listed as well. The felling of trees, transporting of logs, and running sawmills were dangerous jobs. To transport logs from the fields to the sawmills, enslaved men used wagons called carry logs. In May of 1855, while transporting logs to the sawmill, there was an accident involving the carry logs. Solomon, an enslaved man, was crushed underneath a carry log. There was another accident in the sawmill itself. On March 25th of 1841, Jim was caught in the mill's wheel and was crushed to death. These sawmills remained in operation throughout the Collins family ownership of Somerset Place. During the Civil War in 1864, Union troops came through the plantation and commented in letters back home about all that they saw, including the sawmills. In an 1866 advertisement for the sale of property of Josiah Collins III, the water-powered sawmill is mentioned. Later in 1873, the original sawmill is mentioned for the last time in our records. And this year, the sawmill is listed as being, quote, not in bad shape and can be put to work without serious expense. After this time period, we are not entirely sure what happened to the sawmills, although one local tradition holds that the sawmill was moved to the neighboring Pettigrew property and that piles of sawdust could still be seen at the site of these mills until the 1980s. Well, that concludes what we have for this lost building video. If you have any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of our new videos. We hope to see you here sometime soon for a guided tour. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.